Hey, everybody, it's the uh, Drive to the Podcast. I am Pastor Good, and your host, and my good buddy, Pastor Matt Richard, is back. How you doing? It's good to see you, Harrison. Good survived to- survived the uh, turkey season, right? Yeah, now we get to, to roll right into Advent, and um, it's 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 a fantastic season, not because it's just sort of like the, the Christmassy, but don't talk about too much Christmas yet, but, but like a little bit. Like, I actually, more and more in, in my old age, I'm coming to like the end of the world stuff that that gets tacked on here because it, you look around and just everything has gone wrong. Um, and it's one of those like really rare places that we can agree with the atheists and the pagans. Like everybody looks around and says, this is not, this is not good enough. Um, <laughs> yeah. And um one of the, the great places we see it is is in terms of justice. Uh, we were talking a little bit before we started recording here about uh, our, our Lord talks about bringing justice to the nations in a very different way than the nations seem to want, at least today. Uh, everywhere you look, there, there, there's point, uh, there, there's valid points about inequity, injustice. What what do we what does Jesus say about justice? Yeah, I I mean just to build off what you said there, I, I think there's this idea of uh, this utopic bliss, right? And, uh, you know, this utopic bliss of if we have our society or our government or our culture uh, be absolutely perfect, we can almost like take all of our pieces and rearrange them and and make them nice little neat, uh, a nice little neat kingdom per se. And uh, perhaps that's maybe what Jesus doesn't say about it, right? I mean, in a lot of ways. And uh, so we think about we think about the Advent text here for uh, you know, the first Sunday in Advent, he's coming into uh, Jerusalem riding on that donkey. And I can just imagine the buzz in the air at that time. You know, the buzz in the air is like, you know, he's coming into Jerusalem and, you know, perhaps he might kick out Pontius Pilate. And then if we get rid of Pontius Pilate, we get some good order going up and we get we get the army all established. We get everything set up and then he can do some of his Jesus stuff, right? And then maybe we can go on to Rome and take care. I mean, uh, just all the speculation where we can actually put all these pieces together and then we can create this huge utopic bliss um, and make everything right and, and good and true and and uh, peaceful and utopic. Right. But at the very mm. end of the day, uh, he goes to the bloody cross. Right. It, it It's a profound disappointment if the sites are set way too low. Um, and, and what I, I mean by that is everybody's always convinced that utopia is like one election cycle away, maybe two, right. may, maybe right. two. Um, and, and we forget the fact that like, whoever you think you need to depose to get to this perfect world, what do you think you're going to put in place afterwards? Like, is it not going to be another sinner? Are, are you actually yourself going to going to actually love and serve your neighbor in a, such a perfect way to exist in this utopia? Like any sort of perfect world that, that anybody might build, I feel like I'd be the one messing it up. What do I do? <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, you know, and this really brings us back to the book of Jeremiah, which is the text mm-hmm. for uh, Abbot one as well. And it's that that text uh, about the uh, branch, right, that's rising forth. And if you look at that word branch, and I'm just going back to my old seminary days, my old professor, you know, was talking about that branch. It's not it's not just like a twig that you, <laughs> you find laying on the ground in the grass. No, when he says a branch, it's like a sprout. It's, it's, it's a, mm. a new vegetation. It's something brand new coming up out of the midst of a rotten stump. And so that the imagery is that the stump has toppled, this tree has toppled over and that it's just fallen to pieces. And then in the spot, there is a broken down stump and it's rotting and deteriorating and falling apart. And then independently from that, in the midst of that rubble, you have this, this sprout coming forth and this branch, which is, you know, the promise of Christ. And so in a lot of ways, when it comes down to it, we don't put our trust and hope in the princes and kings and the establishments and the institutions of this world, uh, for they all perish. They all will perish. Um, history has shown us that, that uh, these great nations have passed in the passed away in the past, and they do not last. Uh, these great institutions, they don't last forever, and as, as good as they may be. Um, but what endures? Well, for the people of the Old Testament, they were to anticipate that righteous branch, which is the uh, Jesus coming forth, uh, being born in the manger and and sprouting as he goes to that cross. And we too, well, we obviously look back to that, but we also anticipate that in the future as well, as bad as it may get, uh, we have the hope of Christ in spite of all that. 
Right. And it's it's in spite of that, that actually makes it beautiful because we, we always go looking for this sort of utopia in a place where there is not a rotting stump. Um, we're, we're pretty sure that's a precondition for, for having a better place. There should be less bad stuff, less injustice, less inequity. And, and Jesus starts to, to grow hope right in the middle of everything that that is dead and dying. Um, you, you not only have like a beautiful image of the cross there and, and how Christians find life in something that everybody else would pass over uh, as as lowly and, and weakness and, and loss, uh, but but really it, it lets us look at today with a lot more hope too. Um, Jesus worked salvation in a corrupt government. That, yeah. That's, yeah. That's good. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, and this is this even applies to personally, right? Where what Paul says, uh, we don't grieve as pagans do, you know, mm-hmm. we grieve with people who have hope. And so, you know, we, we don't have to, and I, I love it in the book of Jeremiah, it talks about this later on, it talks about these false prophets and false pastors. And they're basically saying, uh, if I can recall here, they're, they're saying, yeah, right here, it shall, it shall be well with you. No disaster shall come upon you. And so they're putting their head in the sand like an ostrich, right? Yeah. Uh, ah, everything's fine. Don't, you know, yeah, it's a rotten stump, but don't, hey, let's put, let's, no question, let's put, yeah. let's trust put a couple of flowers. Yeah, trust the system, put a couple of flowers on it. Uh, let's, you know, let's, let's do a little dance and everything will be great. And uh, mm. no, we as Christians, we can actually see a thing for what it is, right? And if mm-hmm. it is a, a rotting stump, it is what it is. But then that shall not cause us to lose hope because our faith, again, is not, and our trust is not in these falling trees of life. It's in that sprout, uh, that uh, branch, which is Christ, uh, that uh, he does, again, sprout up in the midst of that that decay and that rubble and that's uh, the filth and so forth. And it's just really, and that also comes to the point of idea of, of the, the incarnation, right? Where Jesus is born, mm-hmm. uh, he comes into darkness. The light shines in the darkness. Uh, Christ comes and he dwells amongst, among, among sinners and he uh, dies for sinners. Uh, it's just, it's glorious. Yeah. I, uh, I, I, I feel like you almost, we're going to take flack for that. So, so here's the thing. Um, it, it, the world will say, so if you just sort of have Jesus, it's fine that there's inequity. It, it's fine that, that there's injustice. It, you, should we just, you know, ignore all the problems because, you know, the Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And it, it's a question sort of um, not just is it okay that there's inequity? I think we should be able to agree that it, we should love and serve our neighbor. And that means caring for them in their bodies. The fifth commandment actually matters. Right. Injustice right. is is evil. The fourth commandment would actually build up justice and not injustice. But it, it for us, it doesn't hold hope on the other side of fixing it. it. It means that if you happen to be one suffering injustice, if you happen to be one suffering inequity, hope is not on the other side of fixing what's wrong. And that's really, really good because the people who are actually suffering this can't fix it. That's the whole point of the word. Yeah. And and, and perhaps that's maybe the, oh man, that's the difficult part to really accept. And the, the fact of the matter is this, is that in the grand scheme of things, you know, you and I, all of us, um, the most of us, majority of us in humanity, we're all pawns. We're all tiny, mm-hmm. you know, compared to the the major forces of this world. And even even the major players in this world, to a certain extent, they're powerless uh, to, to make these changes. I mean, you, you think about this, if you could just major, you know, wave a magic wand and make it happen, you know, uh, people would make it happen. Many people would, but uh, it's, it's difficult. This this life is a life of grind, and uh, there are natural disasters that happen. There, there are all sorts of things that happen that are above our pay grade, right? Uh, and so, again, for us to say that our hope is in that branch, our hope is in Christ, uh, and we don't put our trust in princes and kings, that's not saying that we're, we're <clears throat> advocating that everything would burn and, and, and fall apart, and we're not advocating for anarchy. We're just we're saying the, the exact opposite, like what you're saying there, too, is that, that in the midst of it, um, what a thing it is, then we have hope in spite of it. And so uh, to have hope in spite of it grants us a assurance. It grants us confidence and uh, to be centered in Jesus, uh, right? What, what Paul says, right? To be content in all things. I can do all things through him who strengthens me in good times and in bad. And so when things are good, I'm in Christ. When things are bad, I'm in Christ. And uh, it's Christ. Yeah, that's the thing that that actually, it, it, it lets us not even talk out of both sides of our mouth, but but rather have law and gospel. Yeah. Um, it, it lets us sort of point and say, these things are wrong. And Christians should have a voice in this, that, that if you see injustice going on, we can point and say, our neighbors should be cared for. The least of these should be protected. Uh, they, they should not be trampled on. But it also lets us rest in in Christ today, in, in this world, before we see the, the, the resurrection where, where they're well, finally brought out. 
to point out what to build what you're saying there, I mean, spot yeah. on. It's like when we look at the, whether it's an institution or government or so forth, uh, we can we don't have to defend it and we don't have to what hide from it. Again, we can call it what it is because our hope and our center is in Jesus. And so we can look at something and say, you know, this is wrong. This needs to be dealt mm-hmm. with. And regardless of what aisle of the political spectrum we may be. And so, you know, a Christian can actually go against a certain political party because what our allegiance, if you will, and our authority and our and our centeredness is in Christ and his word. And so we can look at whatever institution or whatever the thing is, and we can say, this is wrong or this is good. And, and we don't have to play those political scoring points back and forth because we abide in Christ. Right. It, it, it's the question of what the justice looks like. So if, if our Lord promises to execute justice among the nations and you're not seeing it, where do you look? Yeah. Jesus. This is it. Yep. Pastor, thanks so much. Thanks, Harrison. Have a good one. You too.